welcome back. Today is a snowy, cold day, and my husband is gone. He went hunting for probably about four days, um, elk hunting, and we already have one elk in the freezer, but he's gone for four days with a friend from Maryland who came out here just to experience hunting. So they went together, and so usually when my husband's gone, I won't do as much cooking and baking. I bake and cook more for my husband when he's at home. So the children and I will just um, eat food that's a little easier, like just simple foods. So I don't do as much cooking or baking. So when he's gone, I have sometimes I have a little bit more time to do some projects that I wanna get done. And so I am going to can some venison, ground venison. And this is another simple recipe I have. Actually, my sister Mary gave me this recipe. I already canned some venison, so I wasn't really planning on canning more, but now that I have a little time, I'm going to can some more. This is the last of the 2018 uh, meat that I have had in the freezer, so I brought it out and I'm just going to can it. So now I have room for all the elk meat and the other deer meat that they're getting. So I'm going to uh, show you what goes into this canned meat. Right over here I have the recipe and it's so simple. All that goes in it is 24 pounds of meat and then there's 18 cups of uh, quick oats and now I don't have quite enough here but I think it's only like 12. But that's all I have and I'm not about to run down to the store to get some more. So this will be fine. It's, I think the quick oats are to make it more um, soft and burger-like. So, so this is plenty, I think. And then there's three teaspoons of pepper and five tablespoons of salt. And I added some seasoning salt to it just to give it some flavor and then also you add some water to soften it up a little bit and that is literally all the recipe is just that but what i'm going to add is a whole bunch of crushed garlic if you'd want to you could just put in garlic uh, powder but we have our own garlic so i think there's about 30 cloves of garlic crushed here and then one of the other thing that I add that um, it doesn't call for is some oil and butter because the venison is so lean, which is a good thing, but I like to add some um, butter and oil to it just to, it just helps with the flavor. This canned venison is so versatile. You can fix it many different ways. And the ways I use it is, I'll sometimes chop it up and use it in casseroles as if it were burger. And, or then chop it up and use it in creamy gravies for um, over my potatoes. And I'll even slice it carefully out of the jar and fry it. And the children just love it that way. They'll eat it with ketchup or then a on a piece of fresh bread with mayo. And I will also even just carefully slice it out of the jar and put it on pieces of bread for their lunches with a slice of cheese and mayo. They really love it that way. So there's many different ways of using this uh, simple canned meat. I keep adding water here to the meat because I want it soft and pliable, kind of uh, like the texture of meatballs or meatloaf.
we came down here in the canning kitchen in our basement and filled the jars here because I have all my canning supplies down here, which makes it really nice. My kitchen doesn't have to get all messed up and we can do it down in the basement. And I have such a good little helper with me. She just worked really hard and really loved it. She loved to dig her fingers and hands into that meat. She is a joy to have around. It's always such a good feeling to get my jars into my canners and I will be filling up the canners uh, with water just above the jars till it gets above the jars because it will be boiling for a long time. And if you don't want your jars to get a white residue out around it, then put a little bit of vinegar in it, some white vinegar or some apple cider vinegar. It will help with with that especially if you have hard water that'll happen but if you put some vinegar in it it won't okay guys I got my canning over I got my meat all in the jars and in the canners so my next project I'll show you is um, I have these two like little bar stools and we got these when the twins were just toddlers so that they could sit on these to eat at the table so it would be a little higher than a regular chair uh, but and all the children used these all our five children used these chairs but now they're not really in use and I'm, I wasn't sure what to do with them so I decided to repaint them uh, give them a makeover and I'm still not sure what I want to do with them but I'm thinking maybe for now I'll just set them beside our couches for like a coffee little coffee stand because we don't have any end tables or coffee tables in our living room we just haven't found anything yet and if we did find something it was over the top expensive we just didn't want to buy it and we keep thinking that maybe we'll make something but we just never have yet so far. So I think I'll just use these for little coffee tables for now. I know it's a little funny using a, a little high chair or a little bar stool for that, but I think it can work. And what I'm planning on is staining the top. You can see here, I actually sanded this one down. I sanded the top down and then I'm planning on, on staining it like a dark walnut or something a dark stain and um, and then the legs I'm thinking of painting them white like kind of a rustic look and maybe sand sand it off just a little bit so you can see through and then giving it a coat of varnish I haven't done much of this type of stuff uh, but I always enjoy it when I do it so I'm going to try it out and hopefully it turns out okay. polyacrylic or polyurethane. I'm not quite sure how to say that. Um, 
but I'll show you what I find. I probably won't go to town till tomorrow, and if I even can get down the hill, it snowed a lot today. But what I'm using to um, stain, this is Minwax, and it's, uh, let's see, Minwax Wood Finish Penetrating Stain Provincial 211. It doesn't even say the color. Maybe that's the color. <laughs> and if you, hopefully you can see this. So this, this is just something we had, so I'm going to use it. Oh, look at that, Chloe. Whoa. I ended up actually going to Ace Hardware tonight yet. If I'm on a project, it's really hard for me to stop because I can't wait for the end result. So the roads were a little slick, but I just drove slowly and <clears throat> we ate dinner. That's all over with and the children are playing. So I'm going to start painting again. And what I got was, um, I got two different things. One is, this is this Kills to All Purpose Interior or Exterior Primer. So the guy there at, hard, at the hardware told me that this would be a good one to use uh, for a primer. And then because this already has varnish on it, so you want a primer to so that it sticks. Although I know I've seen some people who didn't put primers on because I've watched some videos on how to do this. And then I got a linen white um, chalked paint. I was going to varnish over it, but then I realized that um, if I do that, it'll take away the chalked look. So I'll just have to see. The guy at the hardware said I would not have to varnish over it because it won't peel off if I put this primer on for sure. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna first put a coat of primer on and then I'll put the chalk paint on. I'm not sure if I'll get this done tonight. I might have to wait till, to till tomorrow morning, but I'll get it done sometime. If it would have been summertime, I would have taken the chairs outside and I would have used spray paint and spray painted them. That would have gone much faster, but it was still enjoyable doing it indoors with the children playing around and me just painting away. It was just kind of relaxing actually. I enjoyed it a lot. organic coffee so I am ready to go and get started on this thing I just got the primer on last night and now I'm going to put 
get this chalk paint on it. And after that, I'm going to be varnishing the tops. So I'm excited to see the finished product. Okay, it's evening again. I had to quit working on these because I had some other things I needed to take care of. And, um, but I did get three coats of varnish on um, these tops. The varnish, the first coat really sank in, just sank in a lot. And then I sanded it a little bit to, to get it smoother and then I gave it a coat of varnish, and then I waited a little bit and gave it another coat. So it's very beautiful. I think they look very pretty just the way they are, but I wanna make them look even a little bit more uh, rustic, like rustic farmhouse. Our home is a rustic log home, so I don't mind if they look old and rustic. So I, what I'm going to do next is, um, I'm going to sand these, especially the outsides of this, just a little bit to smooth it out just a little because chalk paint can get a little bit rough. Just smooth it out. And then I'm going to sand the edges a little bit to, to make a wear through so that you can see the wood underneath. And after I've done that, I'm going to wipe it all down. And then last, what I'll do is I have this um, it's Amy Howard Light Antique Wax. I have never used it before, but I'm going to try. I'm going to, it's just a clear, it's like a clear, it's like a light uh, antique wax. Let me see if I can open it. It's just, it's just a light, I think it, it just gives it a protective, a little protective coat, and it just gives it a little bit more of an antique look. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I rubbed in that wax really well with the rag and it seemed to give it kind of a protective um, seal to it and made it smoother to the touch so I really liked it. Here they are completely made over and I'm pretty proud of myself. It was my first try but I think they turned out quite good. Um, I'm sure I can still learn a lot though, but for my first time, I was pretty happy. just kind of having a day of rest did a few things but just relaxed mostly I went outside with the kiddos and made a snowman with them which was enjoyable it's been a while since I did that and now 
I'm just getting ready just to relax and read a book and drink my tea. And thank you so much for watching. It was really fun doing these chairs. Um, I think they turned out pretty good. I'm an amateur at this. I have actually never done something exactly like this, so uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, but I love trying thing I love uh, trying new things. So I thought it turned out pretty good for my first time. And I'm sure some of you could give me some ideas, some uh, tips and advice. So, um, Joas is still out hunting elk. He's, um, he's a ways away, southern Montana somewhere. And um, I'm hoping he gets something. He needs some times like this. He's always busy. And it's good for him sometimes just to go and do something that fills his soul, that uh, gives him life, you know, that he enjoys. And the same for me. It refreshes me and encourages me and energizes me when I can transform something, make it look better than it was before. So thank you again so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. We appreciate and love you all. Blessings to you. Until next time.